Hello again. Okay, so this time we're still busy with third laws. This time we're going to look at third law three. So we have our third law number three, and that's where we're going to stop. It's not very difficult, it's actually quite easy. Okay, that law says that if I have a radical with a degree d, and inside my radical I have a numerator, let's say the numerator is a. Um, with an exponent e and a denominator let's say b with an exponent f then this radical can be separated over the two okay this can become the square root sorry not the square root the radical over a to the power of e the dth root divided by the radical over a b to the power of f. Now you might say, well, but that's obvious. Of course that's true. Well, it's not really that obvious. And I'll, I'll just remind you again, when I have a radical with a number inside, let's say x, and I'm adding another radical with the same radical, by the way, with a different um, uh, interior, y, this is not equal to the square root uh, uh, sorry, the dth root of x plus y. That's not true. That's not at all how it works. So it isn't necessarily just because the radicals are the same. I can add the insides, or or maybe you have this. This is this happens very often. Something like this. Students say very often, x squared plus y squared, and they say, oh, this is the same as the square root of x plus the square root of y. Okay, and that is equal to x plus y. That is not true. That's not equal to each other. Okay. Why not? Because these third laws only apply to multiplication and to division. And that is simply because the type of operator that uh, uh, sir, not sir, uh, radicals are, uh, are distinctively got to do with multiplication and division. Okay. So I won't go into that now. I'll just do for you a few examples of this. For example, if I take the square root of x squared over 16, okay, that is the same as the square root of x squared over the square root of 16, which is 4, uh, sorry, x over 4. x over 4. Okay. Or let's try something like this. And let's say uh, I've got the square root, okay, and the numerator I've got x to the power of 4 plus 2x to the power of 3 plus x squared. And all of this is over x to the power of 4, okay. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, I would advise you, uh, well, there's a few ways that you can do it. Uh, um, I am first going to simplify the fraction inside here. So before I continue, I'm going to simplify the fraction. And what, what do we have then? Then we have the square root. How do we simplify a fraction? I hope you remember. We can cancel common factors. So to get the common factor, I need to factorize. So I can take out the x squared as a common uh, factor from the numerator. Then I've got x squared plus uh, 2x plus 1 and in the denominator I've got x to the power of 4 still that that's already in its simplest factor form but yeah I can see oh I've got x factors yeah I've got two x factors and they can cancel with two of these x factors to leave two okay and now I can split it up I can take it as the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by the square root of x squared. Okay. Now at this point, we can see that the top has it's got multiple terms. Remember, I can't. This is not equal to the square root of x squared plus the square root of 2x plus the square root of 1. It's not that at all. No. What we'll have to do here is, and not unless we can write this in, in, in its factors, I won't be able to go further. But look at this. That can factorize. Inside here, I can factorize further. I can have it as two brackets. 
both with an x. Okay, what times what gives me 1 when I multiply it and 2 when I add it? Well, it's actually quite easy. 1 times 1. Okay, so there, in the denominator, I've got the square root of x squared. That's just x. But now in the numerator, this can change these two brackets, the same brackets multiplying each other. So this can simply become x plus 1 squared. And the square root of x plus 1 squared over x. And there we can see once again, oh, okay, I've got a base and an exponent. Okay, forget about the fact that the base has multiple terms. Okay, it's in brackets, so it counts as a single thing. So that simply means this is my base, that is my exponent, the whole power has, an, has a square root. So remember when I have a base, an exponent, and a radical with a d degree, then that d can just divide that exponent. So that's all. This 2 is just going to divide, divide that 2 to leave me with 1. So in the numerator I've got x plus 1 in brackets to the power of 1, which is not necessary to write. In other words, this is not necessary to write because it just means one of these brackets and you know, if I take that away it still means that over x and this you can th this is simple enough you don't need to go any further um, even though you can distribute the x to those two to make it x over x plus 1 over x and then this becomes just 1 okay but even even at this point you could have stopped that's quite simple uh, enough uh, or that's also very good okay I'll leave this here I hope you understood and you enjoyed this lesson I will see you in the next one